About two years ago, Warlords of Draenor came out. And like the sucker I am, I bought that shit faster than any YouTuber with more than 100,000 subscribers would sign a thousand dollar contract to produce a paid advertisement. I bought into the hype. I wanted to experience Outland before it was ripped apart by Ner'zhul's portals. But after playing for less than a month, I just lost interest and I never even cared to hit max level. It was at that point I started to think, man, I've been playing this game for 10 years. I think, I think I'm done now. But here I am, playing Legion because apparently no matter what happens, fate itself has decreed that I must play every single WoW expansion until the game eventually dies. And I mean, it also doesn't really help that all my friends around me were playing Legion for more than a month before the expansion dropped, and then proceeded to keep playing, and never stopped. It's been a few months since the game's release. And I feel like the honeymoon stage of this expansion is finally over, so I feel like I can talk about this game rationally enough and just not utterly praise every aspect of it. Although it will probably sound like I'm praising some things about it because despite how many of the things I dislike, there were also a surprising amount of changes to the core gameplay that I did thoroughly enjoy. But let's start with some of the negatives. Class halls. These, no matter how you look at them, are just repurposed garrisons. You become the leader of your class hall you gather followers, you have to send your followers on missions, and you have to wait a dozen of in-game hours and even days for certain tasks to complete. You may have far less followers to worry about, and far less tasks to complete, but you still just have to wait at points in order to progress through specific quest lines. Anyone who argues against these facts is completely oblivious. It just seems strange that Blizzard would repurpose one of their most disliked features from its previous expansion. The only real difference between your class hall and your garrison is the fact that you can see other members of your respective class in your class hall. And instead of having to spend gold to upgrade your garrison, you collect order hall resources through quests and dungeons to upgrade your followers and your armor. Which brings me to my second criticism, artifacts. Sure, they look cool as heck, and it's great that you don't have to worry about actually finding better weapons while leveling or raiding. Instead, I just have to level every single artifact individually. Why give players all these great weapons for free and the freedom to switch between any spec whenever they want, but then essentially railroad them into playing whichever specific spec they decide to dump the most artifact points into. This new artifact system is honestly more restrictive in some ways than the original talent system was, which when it was in the game, you could fully reset at any time for the cost of gold. And yes, you can reset your artifact power if you want to respec, but you lose a percentage of that power when you do so. You never just lost your talent points when you reset your talent tree in Vanilla Through Wrath. And putting points into an artifact talent tree and gaining a whopping 3% extra damage does not feel like I've gained anything meaningful. One of the main things that I liked about the talent rework in Cataclysm was how it removed all those useless passives like Astral Knowledge, Toughness, or Static Shock, and just turned them into passives that you unlocked at a certain level. It's just not satisfying to level up your artifact, and it really only feels like a requirement to get one of the core passives the weapons offer. If artifact points were global, this might fix part of the problem I have with them, but generally, I find having to collect artifact power feels more restrictive than just finding new weapons altogether. So while class halls and artifacts either don't change anything or almost pull the game backwards, classes as a whole have either been completely reworked or changed for the better. And to me, this makes a lot of classes feel a lot more engaging to play. Maybe this just has to do with the fact that I completely changed my control scheme this time around, but I really think that it has to do with all these new combat animations that Blizzard added, as well as creating completely new specializations, which in turn almost revitalizes older classes to feel completely new. The best example I can give of this is with classes like the Hunter. Previously, I had never had much interest in playing a Hunter, mostly because all of their specializations seemed like the exact same class with only minor differences. You have a bow, you have a pet. Your pet tanks, you deal the damage. Almost every MMO ever has a class like this now. But now, hunters have a melee oriented spec, which is something that surprised me so much that I decided to level one all the way from level one. It has been nearly half a decade since I leveled a character from one to cap. And man, it is so much easier than I remember it being. Hunters previously had three specializations, which all dealt damage via ranged attacks with guns and bows, as well as lightly controlling your pet. Hunter specs now, while still named the same, function completely different. Beast Mastery now focuses more on controlling only your pet to deal damage, and heavy management on your focus. Marksmanship, with the correct talent, allows you to play Hunter with no pet at your side at all, 
And survival, the biggest change, now allows you to equip a two-handed spear or any other weapon if you dare transmoke Talonclaw and get up close and personal with your enemies. Other classes got changes as well. Combat Rogue has been changed to Outlaw Rogue and is now the master of cleaving multiple opponents apart and isn't as stealth oriented as its subtlety and assassination counterparts. Balance Druids have been completely reworked as well. They removed the annoying as hell Lunar and Solar Peak mechanics, which I absolutely hate it. Now, they just have Astral Power, a bar that simply builds up and is used as a resource to cast more powerful spells. A lot of casters seem to have had something like this done to them, removing the mana bar and instead either slowly build up damage or rely on cooldowns alone. It feels a little weird not having a mana bar anymore on classes like Elemental Shaman, but overall, it's a change that I enjoy, because it makes some classes feel less cumbersome and generally faster and more fun to play. So from past experience, I didn't really like the Death Knight. I tried to get into them, but it just never really clicked for me. Monks, I've never really had an interest in either. Demon Hunters, again, something I saw and mostly disregarded. Until I actually played one. <laughs> and boy oh boy, I was legitimately not expecting to like Demon Hunters. I wouldn't go so far as to say that I love playing them as much as my Shaman or my Hunter, but I just didn't expect to like them as much as I do. Demon Hunters are all about mobility. Their DPS spec has an ability that allows them to dash forward and damage enemies they pass through. And no matter what spec you're playing, you have the ability to double jump and glide around with your wings. This speed and mobility that the Demon Hunter has at his disposal makes them feel quite different from the majority of classes currently present in World of Warcraft. And finally, let me touch on the leveling in Legion. So, in previous expansions, you would essentially travel from one zone to another in a set path, with minor variations on where you might choose to level next. Zones were locked out to a specific level, so you could only level up effectively if you were around the same level as the zone in question. In Legion, the entirety of the Broken Isles is scaled to your level. This means that you can travel to any zone at any time, start the quest chain, begin leveling, and if you get sick of the area you're in, you can just switch to another one and come back later. If your friend is level 107 and you boost a character 100, you can just start leveling together in a zone that both of you have yet to complete. Scaling makes leveling so much smoother, less restricted, and just generally better than previous expansions. It felt awesome going through the entirety of High Mountain and experiencing a fully contained story from beginning to end, all with full voice acting, a dungeon, and final boss encounter at the end of a multi-part quest chain. And every single zone does this. Valshara, Azuna, Stormheim, they all function as their own individual stories with twists, turns, and a final battle at the end of them. When you hit 110, you actually don't run out of things to do. As soon as you hit cap, you unlock world quests. Now, don't get me wrong, it's awesome that it gets players running around together in the world, but they really are just recycled quests and objectives from when you were leveling. Now, world quests are one thing, but what matters most is that you unlock Suramar, the only zone in the Broken Isles that is level locked. Now, while the outskirts of Suramar may have the color palette of something that a toddler drew, the city of Suramar itself has got to be one of the best looking cities I've ever seen in Warcraft. Dude, I even read the quest dialogue this time around because I actually had an interest in the story and the lore that was being explored this time. The Legion, after who knows how long, is finally invading Azeroth again. And Sargerist, the biggest of the big bads, is actually being brought up in conversations. As a Warcraft lore fanatic, it's just really exciting to finally see things moving towards the eventual invasion of Argus. So overall, Legion isn't a bad WoW expansion. It'll never match BC, Wrath, or Mists, but it is in no way as bad as Kata or Warlords was. It's just a decent expansion, a step in the right direction, and something that I hope will keep me coming back for the next couple months and eventually to invade Argus.